Please welcome uh, Greta Gerwig and Noam Baumbach, who just made a funny and wonderful film called Francis Ha. Um, one, one critic asked if Gerwig was now the greatest actress alive. And when Chris Rock saw it at an early screening, he told Gerwig and Baumbach, who were friends of his, that it was like a full meal where you actually want to do something afterwards. Very quickly, Noah Baumbach's first job was as a messenger at The New Yorker. Uh, he wrote and directed Kicking and Screaming, Margot at the Wedding, and The Squid and the Whale. With Wes Anderson, he co-wrote The Life Aquatic uh, with Steve Zizou and The Fantastic Mr. Fox. He's in the middle of making a film called While We're Young with Ben Stiller and Naomi Watts. You made Francis Ha in secret, um, and you made it so cheaply uh, that you could pretty much do what you wanted, it gave you great power. In the process, you fell in love with each other, and then when the film came out, everyone fell in love with the film. So is it probably true that you've had the best film experience uh, you, and you can never repeat it and everything in the rest of your life will be a disappointment? <laughs> it's probably that's, true. It's possible. Is that, yeah. is that possibly the case? Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always wanted to earn in a movie a kind of moment where you could right. do something that just felt good, you know, and that both was, it was an expression of the character, but it was almost like a time out to feel good. And, um, you know, like when a song says, like, you know, I don't know, like, feel like pop songs where they were like, break it down, and then they do some other, <laughs> they do some other thing, and then yeah. they come back, you know. Right. You know, <laughs> right. you know, that if you could do that in a movie, and in other times, I feel like I've tried it in movies, not that anyone's ever seen, but I've like editorially, but I didn't really plan it or think it through or, and, and I felt like, oh, you know, that's just embarrassing. And, and so, um, but so it, in the writing of Francis, that was very, I mean, we hit a point where it was like, wouldn't that feel great to start this right. chapter this way? And, it, and so I never felt it with that, sequence like I didn't think like oh this does this feel not of the movie it felt totally of the movie in a great way so I felt that was a really it's the first time that had happened and so and I felt like I had kind of earned it you also included your own family in the film yeah. um, and that that's a there's this very beautiful montage where your character returns to Sacramento and spends a few days uh, Christmas with your Family. I mean, one thing that you told me was that y you were touched by how older people who saw the film um, had responded to that, and that they were relieved to see evidence of a child loving their parents. Um, is that something? Yeah. With Noah, we had originally written a much longer section in right. Sacramento. It was originally, and if it had been as long as we'd made it, I think we would have had to have hired actors because it was, it was just too much dialogue, um, but uh, we paired it from that, we paired it down to this montage, and I asked my parents to be included, and they were kind of tentative about it, and, um, and my mom actually expressed what I think a lot of parents who watched the movie later were worried about. It's really easy to sell people out, and it's really hard to, sh I think it's really hard to show them lovingly but truthfully right. and I think no the way Noah and Sam shot it and and were respectful of Sacramento but also capturing it was um it was like it it, it really felt I I I'm moved every time I see that section because I do love where I'm from so the, I guess it was a kind of you've described a kind of little subgenre of um, films where squares go and get sort of battered around by um, less square people. Uh, what happened to that genre and why have you revived it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we've revived exactly that genre, but, but, but there was a thing I feel like in the 80s was this, um, like the, the yuppie who is taken into the underground, mm. of, you know, like something. something wild had that 
too, which was great. Um, which, which we watched during making Francis. Yeah, that's true. Actually, when we shot at Vassar for Francis, we convinced I, some kids. I got the kids around. There were these kids were helping us, and I was like, you know, you got access to a screening room, and um, you got some prints or something. Why don't we watch an old print? But they had nothing. They had no prints, right. so we we watched a Blu-ray. But <laughs> um, but something wild to just to come out on Blu-ray. So we watched that and. Yeah, and, and there were even things like Lost in America, the Albert Brooks movie, which I love. And um, uh, um, it's that thing of like, like you, like you get in a car with someone, and suddenly there's like bikers. Yeah, and then yeah, like, yeah. And you're yeah, like, I mean, even oh, like, we're here. Yeah, like yeah. Vacation was even that mm -hmm. kind of. I mean, it's like there was that thing of you know. I'm sure there's books about it. I'm wondering about your future writing. Um, I mean, no, you've created characters. Um, in Margot and in a new film, who sort of plunder their personal lives for uh, fictional material um, in a way that's quite sort of brutal. Um, and some might say you did the same with uh, Squid and the <laughs> Whale. Um, and Greta, I think you've used personal material with Francis Ha. So I guess the question is, um, what are the rules now uh, about writing about each other? Oh, and my who, God. <laughs> and, and who owns the Swedish holiday? <laughs> I feel like, well, I've already had, the, like, in the, at the movie No One's Making Now, that um, he wrote it on, I didn't write it with him or anything, but uh, I mean, like, there are definitely things I've said in it, but in right. a nice, but it's, I don't, I, I experience it as, like, flattering. I was like, I was, you did think it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> now it's in this thing. Um, yeah. I think even if we were to use the same material, it also like, when you make your own thing, you don't recognize, like, no one would recognize it as being the same material, if that makes sense. Like, if, right. if no one and I took the same event that happened that we were both there for, and I made my version of it, and he made his version of it, I don't even think they would look, like, no one would say that's the same source material, it would seem like it was totally, or that's my, that's what I, I think. Let's I don't hope. know yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was reading, um, and or Noah had read before, and I had read this um, Joseph Conrad novella called The Shadow Line, and it's about someone, it's about boats, because it's Joseph Conrad. <laughs> um, I related to it nonetheless. Um, but it, but it's about a 27 year old and it's about um, the shadow line is a like it, it's when you pass these these things uh, like the equator or something and you don't know until it's done you don't you don't actually know when you're passing through it and the book is about the shadow line of youth and I think Francis is passing through it and she doesn't realize as it's happening and it's not until it's over that she realizes I passed through the shadow line. That was it, and I think it's it's that kind of. I mean, and and we would the the, the first scene of the movie is um, this maybe this idyllic day that maybe never even happened with her best friend, and it's like that idea of you don't know the last great day you have with your best friend, you just know when it's never happened again. And I think there was something in um, Annie Hall that always stuck with me when he takes her to Coney Island, or um, where he grew up, and they, they and she, he says, that was the last good day I had with Annie. And they're with the friends, and you're it's just so sad. And you're like, that's the last good day we had to get. I don't know. And I, I think, but you, do, you only know those things in your rear view mirror. You don't ever know it while it's happening. And I think Francis, that's what Francis goes through. What was good about Francis, too, I think, was that we, and I think this actually kind of is in the movie in some way, is I don't know that we ever quite knew we were even going to make it. Like, we were kind of writing it. I had this idea that I wanted to kind of make something really stripped down and cut all the crap out of movie making and make something with a small crew and do something in black and white. And, and we, but I think not having that pressure from the beginning, I think, I don't know if you felt this, but it's like we, it was almost like, you know, let's see how this goes. And even making it was a little bit of that. Like, you know, let's, you know, see this, this, this try it out, yeah. see what happens. And 
you know, and at a certain point we kind of realize this may be pretty good.